I'm Ryan Lightfoot Brown of Fun Calendar. We're joined today by the elite rated John Chatfield Roberts, manager of the Jupiter Merlin range, including the elite rated Balanced, Growth and Income Funds. Thank you very much for joining us. Ryan, thank you for asking me. Um, now, your investment process has three sort of levels in the stages. It's, um, it first looks at the macro environment, then you work on finding talented managers, and then you construct that all in a portfolio with real conviction. Um, so if we'll look through those in, in detail, if, if you don't mind, um, how do you view the, the world economic and sort of political environment today, uh, and how is that invest affecting your investment decisions? I think we might leave the politics to one side, <laughs> Ryan, but um, in terms of the, the economics, you've got the overarching background of a very large amount of debt out there, um, which has meant that interest rates have been low for a very long time. And the way we see it is that they're going to stay low for a very long time to come. And that pretty much is the background that informs most of the rest of our, our decisions. Um, and with that in mind, how has your asset allocation changed in the last year or so? To be frank, it hasn't changed very much in the last year or so. The last major thing we did was uh, reduce our emerging market exposure. Gosh, that would be over a year ago now, sort of in the first quarter of uh, 2018. We've, relative to other people, got quite a lot of money in the United States of America, which people have for many, uh, many years said it is too expensive, but actually it has continued to be uh, an engine for investment returns and so that has been pretty much steady as she goes for us. And how do you go about finding sort of talented managers and how would you define what well, talent? The interesting thing about finding the best people is that of course you're not starting with a blank sheet of paper and I've been in the industry not quite 30 years the team that we have have been managing money for over a hundred if you add it all up together uh, which sounds a bit odd really but uh, so you're looking at people you mostly have come across before and you're almost catching up with what they are doing today compared to what they did five years ago, ten years ago. We're always on the lookout for good new youngsters, mm. but they don't happen very often. Okay, and have you found any new talent, new talent or, or new youngsters coming through recently? Well, we invested in with somebody called Hugh Yarrow about four years ago who runs the even Road Income Fund and at the time that was a 50 million pound fund and it, although the fund had been around for about five years it was, if you like, new young talent. Hugh had been in his 30s, we think uh, he and his uh, uh, sidekick, so to speak, Ben Peters, uh, we think we've got a good long run, 10, 15, 20 years uh, with them. They've made the decision to soft close their fund, so there are relatively few ways of gaining access to it. Um, and that's the sort of thing you want. You want somebody in a stable environment, uh, they've got their own firm effectively, um, who are going to be around for the long term, who have a, a, a repeatable process and who are really, really competitive. And, and when you said, how do you define talent? That's what you really want, people who want to win. And now your balance fund still invests in AXA UK Select Opportunities, where we've recently seen a very long-standing manager uh, retire and the, sort of the deputy or the co-manager has taken over. Um, why did you come about to this decision? What's sort of the recognition of, of that new manager in sort of terms of talent? Well, Chris St John is the new manager, mm -hmm. and we have known him for a bit. Um, AXA Framington have been perfectly sensible about bringing him in to see us before Nigel Thomas retired. Um, and we have taken the view that Chris uh, St John is um, probably going to be a good manager, but mm -hmm. it, it's all about conviction. So at the moment, uh, we don't have a huge amount of money in that position, but we, 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 do, we do definitely have uh, money with him. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's another example, actually. We've had money for years with James Findlay, uh, who run, ran Findlay Park American. Now, um, I'd had money invested with him since actually 1992, although his boutique started in 1998. And he managed to move across his responsibilities to a man called Anthony Kingsley, who is now the Chief Investment Officer and Head of the Finley Park American Fund. James still uh, is the majority shareholder in the overall business, mm -hmm. but um, we do try and look for people who have good succession planning and who can uh, do that um, in uh, an exemplary manner. And that's a fantastic example of how to do it. And other than what we've already mentioned, um, which asset classes or managers do you have the most conviction in at the moment? 
Well, um, the interesting thing is that markets um, reward you for so long and then they come back and sort of punch you in the face. So um, where we have made most money in the last few years are in what you might describe as growth managers. So Terry Smith would be a good example. Um, actually Anthony Kingsley would be a good example as well. Um, so they tend to be more growth rather than value. They tend to be more America focused rather than anywhere else. But we are not forgetting about the people who've had a harder time. So value managers out there, um, you know, their time will come again. I can't tell you when, um, but you would think that their time will come. And if you look at some of the, say, the technology stocks, um, not that our growth managers are big necessarily in technology stocks, but some of those have got really quite high valuations. And if you look at the semiconductor cycle, which is just looking at um, essentially um, the chips that go into um, phones, what have you, it seems to us that prices are falling. There's quite a lot of capacity. And so there are straws in the wind that some of these growth type managers might have a harder time and perhaps value might have its day in the sun. And when might the team invest in sort of an ETF or a passive fund instead of an actively managed fund? Well, we have a history of having used um, passives over the years. Uh, once upon a time we had uh, a mid-250. Uh, it was actually a unit trust rather than an ETF, but it's the same sort of thing. We've had uh, a physical gold ETF in our portfolios for uh, 10 years now, more than 10 years actually, and that is purely a passive holding of gold. Um, and just at the moment, if you looked at the ETFs of shares, we think there's quite a concentration in those top um, companies, so we're uh, concerned about that. So we probably wouldn't be buying a passive share tracker at the moment, but uh, they definitely have their place, uh, they are definitely uh, cheaper. We think our, our, our sort of uh, ability is to find those best managers. And generally speaking, you have to pay up for them. Well, John, that is really very interesting. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Ron. And for more information on the Jupiter Merlin funds, including the balance, growth and income funds, please visit fundcaliber.com.